Hello? Ted! Oh, so you just arrived from Thailand. I would love to meet you. Can you come? We have a special uh, COE worship. Okay, okay, I'm waiting for you. I'll call some other friends, alright? I'll just be here waiting. Alright. Oh, Ted is back. Nice to see him. I wonder how he is doing. Is it traffic? Why is he not coming yet? Okay. Oh wow! Thank you, thank you for coming. Please, please join us. Thanks. This will be a very good worship service. I'm actually trying to contact other friends as well, but um, do you have the number? Yeah. Uh, who else did you see? Uh, oh, Rosco. Okay. Yeah, sure. Rosco. Yes, sir. He's calling you. No, I'm actually calling you, but uh, he asked you to come. Can you come? Yeah. Okay, one minute, he'll be here, sir. Okay, very good. 30 seconds, sir. 30 seconds, all right, good. See you. Okay. Oh, Rustam is, okay, good. Um, I was, oh, oh, I just received a text message from, from Kizaya Lopez. I don't know her, sir. I don't know her. I don't know her. Well, it will be a good time for you to meet her, too. Okay. Yes. She just sent me a text message. She said she's here as well. Okay, I, I'll text her back. Oh no, I better call her. Kizaya? Yes. Oh, yeah, I received your text message. Just come. I'm waiting for you. Yes. Oh, you're coming? Good, good. Oh, do you need me to fetch you? Do you want me to drive there to, to fetch you? Are you? Okay, no need, right? Okay. So just come. All right, I'll wait for you. All right. Thank you. So Kizaya is coming too. Um, Sorry, and Esther's number. You have Esther's yes, number. Esther. Oh, good. Can you call her? Okay. Okay. Esther, how did you leave? <laughs> Esther, hello. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, ask you to come now, and if it's okay, in just 20 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Bring, don't bring anything. It's your Bible. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, I would really love to call other friends, but we don't have enough space, so maybe we'll call them next time. Okay, yeah, for the meantime, we'll just have to borrow oh, you. Very good. Okay, very wow. Best of luck to you. <laughs> Alright, actually, we are very happy because you are with us today, and this is such a surprise for everyone. <laughs> for, for you as well, right? But you know, we have so many friends here who may not be familiar who you are. So can you please, you know, um, introduce yourselves and tell us your major and where you are serving or, or where you just recently served. Okay, let's start with Sir Ted. <laughs> and here, okay, let me start. I am, uh, do I have to stand? Okay, uh, I'm Ted Christopher Mikayan. I am an alumni of COE, and I am now teaching in Thailand. I am here for the vacation because uh, the time is different from Thailand. We end classes in March, and still classes here, so it's a good time to come and see another room. And I enjoy everyone's company, so I teach biology in Thailand. By the way, this is your first time to see us in our new building? Yes. It has been, you know when I came, I immediately came and like, I didn't want to see Sir, I wanted to see the building. <laughs> no, but, I mean, I came and I stood right there and I'm like, wow. You know, God's blessing has always been upon COE and I thank God for this. Yes. Thank you for visiting us, Ted. Hello, my name is Esther Imperio and I took Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English here. I graduated on May 2016 and I just recently taught in Northern Luzon Adventist College for two years but now I am applying to um, Haiyan Academy for my course. Hello everyone, I am Kizaya Lopez. I am an English teacher and I is that a layman Adventist school? Hi, my name is Rosco Raymar Vienni Barreto, and as you can see, my course is the same as his, because we have the same colors. <laughs> so, my, uh, I took up 
It has some very good incidents, by the way. Um, my course was Veteran Secondary Education, major in biology. And last year, I, I taught at the Adventist Academy in Taytay, Palawan. And I have three students here. I see them. And now I'm teaching. Hello, Mr. Tito. Don't. Samay na kani. So if in case, pagkabalan yong estudyante, because lagi na lagi na pagkabal. Thank you very much. Um, actually, I was I, I just observed that we are all from the secondary education. I would like to I'll ask Ma'am Ma Francisco if she has seen any elementary education alumni from the congregation. Hello, Ma'am Francisco. Uh, have you have you seen any alumni from the elementary education anywhere? Those who have already taught for at least a year. Oh, okay. oh yes, an alum, an alumna. Ah, yes, okay, I'll call her. Mambatulayan, you are an alumna of COE. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, can we call you on stage? Do you want someone to fetch you? Oh, you would. You are with your son now. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, you can bring her, but you can bring him too. Yes. Okay, don't worry, I'll, I'll prepare one seat for you. Jean will bring it to the stage right now. The seat, so that you can you can come join us too. Thank you, Mom Asa. So at least now we are complete. We have representative from the elementary education as well. Alright. Um, well, I was listening to, to Dr. Yap today because the topic, the sermon was actually very inspiring. It's about service. And many of us think that service, just like what she mentioned, many of us think that service is going to a far flung area, going to the remotest area. Well, yes, that is also service and that is also mission. But one thing that was reiterated in her sermon today is that service or mission work is not limited to just going to a far place. We can also be great missionaries wherever we are right now. And as a matter of fact, I, uh, and I would like to share one quotation. It says, we should all grow where God planted us. And when we grow where God plants us, then that is doing mission work. So today, I just very, very briefly, if you could just answer in 45 seconds or one minute, um, I just want you to, to share why did you choose the mission field where God plants, planted you? Why did you choose or why are you where you are right now? Some of you are in, uh, are in Thailand, some of you are, were in, in Enla, some of you were in a layman school, in a denominational school, in a university. So why did you choose to follow where the Lord, uh, why did you choose your mission field? Or why did you accept the call to be in your mission field? Um, when I chose Enla as my mission field, it was actually an answered prayer because there, there are there were three schools that I have been considering. It's in Mamsi, yes, in academy there, also in Polillo because my parents were living that time there, and also in Enla. But then I said, Lord, where will I really go? And then I just said, whoever calls me and told me to come without any interview, without any resume, just telling me, hey, come here because we really need an English teacher. That's it. And then and Lab really called me without any name. So I went there. And there I have learned a lot and later on I'll be sharing when that was asked. But for that question, I chose the place where I thought because it, it is where um, God sent me and I have never uh, I will never regret my experience there in Enla. Hello, Stu, it's your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, so... And now is I'm here at AUP, but to give you a little bit of context how I got here, it's because...
because it was her fan. <laughs> well, he did not invite me, however. When we were, we, when we ended our internship, then she invited a math teacher who helped us in our reading for math. And, and Serfam did this. <laughs> okay, so um, if ever you would not go for review, you can try and pitch elsewhere far away and give your service to the Lord and He will not fail you. <laughs> and I was like, and the rest of the mem uh, the rest of us went for our review center and there's two of us who went there for that one. And actually I went there not because I want to at the first time. I place that in mind, however, I have this classmate Ron and he said, I think I want to go there. I, I told that to him. And then that night he called his parents and said, I want to go to Palawan too. Then he said Then the next day he said, Dude, and so we went there and was able to teach at a school. It's actually a church operated school. It's far away. Just ask Lethany, Felix, or Kenneth. They can tell you how it is there. And actually, after the two years that I've spent there, I don't know where to go next. So what I did was send resumes. I sent resume from two to three other schools, and I said, I don't know where I'm gonna go next. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, a UP called and said, are you available on Monday? Without asking, where are you? Would it be costly if you go here? And they said, come on Monday. And that's the reason how I ended up here. Actually, I wasn't thinking that I would be accepted here, but if it Maybe it was the will of the Lord, and now I'm here in front of you. Yeah. My turn now? Yeah, your turn. Okay. Um, before taking the boards, uh, 2016, September, uh, I had plans of, I told myself I wanted to go to the missionary field, and one of the places that I wanted to go is where I, I grew up, in uh, Ephesus, it's the Federated States of Micronesia. It's, it's, if you look at the globe, you'll see just a small dot, okay? And that is where I wanted to go for a year, at least a year. But I had also another, I had other options, and that was Thailand. So after taking the boards, I, uh, I had my papers ready for, for, for YAP. It's actually for YAP. So uh, I had my MBI ready, I had my, uh, my TOR ready. I, I had all the papers, I, had all, I was ready only for the ticket, for the plane ticket. But after the boards, uh, everything stopped. Like, walana, walana communication, and uh, I was, I, I told, I was telling myself maybe uh, there's just a slight problem. I can wait. But then my friend called me Thailand. She's like, uh, you know, because I passed my resume there too. I mean, like CV, and she said, uh, do you have work now? And I said, no. Uh, I'm still waiting for my plane to get to Yap because I want to serve as a missionary. And she said, oh, that's too bad. Um, you have a schedule, you have your class schedule ready, you have your, uh, you're working on this day, so, yeah, Siam. So I have to go, okay. I told myself before that, so I have to go, Lord, where, wherever you want me to go, whatever comes first, uh, I will go. I want to go here, but if you will bring me there, it's okay then. So, I said, uh, okay. It's okay, I can still come, because um, I only need a ticket for this one, but they stopped. But I don't have communication. So I, I went there to Thailand, and uh, I think the reason why, because I wanted to work as a missionary, but God brought me there, was teaching, reaching out there is, is a bit difficult. Especially when it comes to language. Language barrier is very, very hard, because it is not like ours. We have syllables. Uh, we speak by uh, yeah by syllables. There in there, they have tones, and those tones are very difficult to differentiate if you're not very. So it's it's a bit hard to reach out there, and and the religion there is, is Buddhism. So it's it's a bit uh, it's a bit difficult to. So I think the reason why God brought me there is for me to practice reaching out to people, and you know, 
like the need for God's word to be spread there is, is a bit big. So I think I probably have that reason. Before, before the two ladies answer, just to add, um, Ted might not be teaching in an Adventist school, but it does not mean that you are not doing a mission work when you are not in an Adventist setting. And later on, we will be talking more about that. I am currently teaching at Aleman School under Adventist Education. At first, I applied there to earn um, experience. But then, as I go through the year of teaching, I observe that most of students there uh, doesn't know about Jesus and doesn't even know how to pray. And that school really needed teachers. I decided um, last January, I decided to uh, talk to our principal because uh, I want to stop my work there and to continue a uh, master's education. But then uh, I prayed to God and I think, and I can really feel it, that God called me there because I would like to be an instrument where I can introduce Jesus to them. As an alumna of the College of Education, I've been teaching here for the last nine months, I think. <laughs> yeah, in this building. <laughs> but the other many, many years in the past, I'm from the Northern Luzon Mission, and of course, in the last 11 years and nine months at AUB College of Education. So I'm the youngest. <laughs> next to Mount Francisco. <laughs> Why I am in this field of mission? Number one, when I responded to come to AUP, it was only to fill a need because Mom Amelia Swasi is soon to retire and they cannot find a single lady <laughs> to fulfill and to fill the post because they said, it's the cheapest way for AUP. A family worker who will come, with, maybe we cannot have the, the house yet or whatever. So they look for a single lady, the easiest. And because I am a graduate and I was probably still fresh in their mind. I just finished my master's degree 2002 at IAS and they said, Oh, nakabayad na siya sa NLM. So, pwede na siyang hilain at kumil. In the first place, it was just to fulfill a need. But later on, you know, I was challenged and I was somewhat tempted also to, to go somewhere else where there is a greener pasture. But then I said, I came to AUP for a need. And I will continue to feel this position not only for a need, but also in obedience to God's call. So, you know, that service attitude was refreshed by Dr. Botabara a while ago. I was listening and I said, yes. When you obey the Lord, when you obey His call, first it was a very loud call, and then Probably with long years in the service, that call is becoming, you know, uh, lesser and lesser in volume until the Lord will give you people who will encourage you and who will strengthen your faith and who will give you the inspiration to continue to be in His service. Thank you. So, uh, as what we have observed today, the Lord calls differently, the Lord calls in different ways. Uh, as like what also Dr. Yang mentioned earlier, right? Sometimes the Lord communicates through dreams, through other people. Sometimes the Lord puts you in a mission field by blocking another way where you initially planned where you should be. And sometimes God calls you in a way that is surprising, like you just being called just to fill in a certain need. But sometimes God also calls you like, 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 like by orchestrating events for you to be there, just like what happened to you. And, and then to some of us. Now, the, uh, we would also like you to, uh, all of you, we 
would like you to share today just one vivid experience because you have been teaching one vivid experience that whenever you think about that you can say Lord this is why you placed me here one vivid experience where you felt that yes the Lord has a special purpose for you and this is the purpose why God placed you here okay there was one time I was teaching in, uh, in the class and I teach science and our topic was about evolution so it's fun to teach evolution uh, I was I was a bit nervous when it came to this topic because I know they, they don't believe in, in God right so uh, I said how before I come to class I, I prayed I said God how do I how do I put you into their minds? You know, like how do I, how do I show them to you? And so class started, and we were talking about evolution. And it came to monkeys. Oh, you can guess what happened next. So I was thinking, um, okay, guys, I popped out the question. I'm like, where do you come from? I asked them, and they were laughing at me. I'm like, sir, you don't know where you're from. I'm like, oh, I know where I'm from. Do you know where you're from? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, do you believe that you come from them? I point to the picture. It was a, it was a, a monkey that turned to evolution, to a guy, to, to a person. They're like, do you believe that you come from monkeys? And they're like, they started laughing. They're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was like, And I said, I told them, you know, I don't believe that. They're like, why, sir? Where do you come from? I'm like, I come from the dust. Oh, they laughed more. Like, they were just, they're like, what? And they're like, oh, this guy's crazy. I'm like, why is, there the why is he our teacher? I'm like, no, you know, I believe that someone big created me. And they're like, really, sir? Really? Like, yeah, I was formed by his image. And I believe that he is so powerful that he made this universe for us. They were like, no. And then it came to my mind that I, I was like supposed to kind of like go into that topic. So I was like, now let's go back to your cousins. <laughs> so your cousins, uh, from there they became mad. So after that class, I was walking back to the office and I'm like, Father, this is tough. I'm like, this is this is really hard. I mean, it's it's difficult when they have no hint of of who you are. And so every day I pray I pray before going to class, like Father, I hope that in my actions, in my words, I can somehow put you in. So every time I teach about uh, like green grass or like trees, I'm like, you know, the person that did this is brilliant. So I'm kind of like putting, you know, I'm trying to teach them that there's someone who is actually a creator of all this. So uh, I'm still working on it. It's kind of hard. I'm still into the subject of, especially genetics. So it's tough. But I thank God for giving me the knowledge. I just want to share my experience with, the, with two of my students in NLAP. Actually, they became my best friends. Um, these two students are very, um, how shall I say this? They always want counsels. They always want advices. There will be times when they would just come to my room, I'm about to sleep, and they will knock at the room of my, uh, I, I was staying at, at the dorm there. They will knock, and then they will just say, Mom, I'm afraid of coming in. Mom, <laughs> So how, how shall I, uh, how, how can I share? Of course, through my experience, when I also experienced my broke up with, with my first boyfriend, and I will be telling stories, and then I will just say what have I done when when that happened, and um, even up to two o'clock in the morning we are talking, and then the next girl, mom, what 
ulitin mo, sasagutin ko na ba siya kasi naman di ko alam. Yes, I will address again the next question. Actually, it, uh, God has given us freedom, but you will see the timing, you will see if you are very convicted and, and, and a lot. And then, you know, basically it's just uh, storytelling and just friendly talk. And after that, they will they will say, alam mo, nakatulong kahit na kahit na gantong simple usapan, sobrang nakatulong talaga. And then, you know, it happens every time they need help. And I was like saying, this is life. I mean, all people need help. There are times when, when someone would just come because they don't have money or they don't have food. And this is the reality of life. We're living in a world where we have to be connected with other people, where we need to be related to them and really build a good relationship to them so that they will be able to trust us. And we've got, in, in that experience, I have learned the word acceptance. Not just, um, of course, personally, I have a lot of insecurities. I have a lot of uh, questions with regards to who am I and whatever. And then I realized it's not only me. There are also people who are like me, wondering who they are. And that's what I learned. Acceptance. Accept myself, who I am. And also accept the people who are hungry and thirsty for what they need and, and what they desire to have in life. So that's, that's what I learned. So for Ted, the inspirational experience that he had is when God puts him in a situation where he has to share his faith, but not in a blatant way. But, and, 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 and I believe that it is somehow encouraging him to still know his, 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 where he is grounded so he can share more. And for Esther, it's about being there when someone needs you and just being an instrument of God to at least point these young people to the principle that God wants them to follow. We'll see what the three remaining alumni will share about their own experiences. Okay, uh, there's this one time in our school, um, that time is a very hectic day for us because of the programs and activities. When I came into the classroom, I just started our lesson. Okay, class, our lesson for today, blah, 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 blah. blah. And then there's a student who stood and said, Mom, hindi mo tayo nagpe-pray, bakit nagkaganyan na tayo? Hindi po siya din. Tapos yun, next, uh, nung sinabi niya yun, parang nag-stop ako. Tapos naisip ko, ay oo nga, no, hindi pa tayo nag-pray. Sabi ko, tapos, and then I remember the verse in the Bible, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Then I thank God because uh, now our students learn that they have to ask the guidance of the Lord before doing anything. Something that they can learn from you. Alam niyo, 
I only like the subject, but they like me when every, every time I come in. I get to the point. And they started to like, alam niyo yung minsan, Sir, alam niyo, amore yung subject na gano, ang, ang hirap, ang hirap ang inig, ginagano na namin. Sabi, alam niyo parang, it's all about the relationship. Sana yun yung na, natutunan ko na parang, I think I'm here for, to, to change a little bit of what I am, and to bring people closer to Christ. Alam niyo, mahirap pa ka-bring with just the Bible text. The best way would be to communicate, to talk with them. Hindi naman kailangan buong gabi kayo mag-usap, but have a little bit of a communication. Be a person na kailangan nila. Kasi be there for them. Alam niyo, alam niyo yung mga grade 8 ngayon, they call themselves edge teenagers. Actually, they keep communicating talaga ako, that's my grade 8. Grabe. Iba yung way of communication na parang sa'yo, ano na nangyari sa mga kabataan na to? Kaya natin matagal kinakausap ng mga magbutang nila. And you wonder, they need someone to listen to, someone that would explain it to them, to give parang ano, personal touch, not necessarily literal touch, whatever. Kailangan nila yung kusama na may makikinig. Magra-rant yan sa'yo na magra-rant or kung ano magagawin nila, pero they need someone who thinks that, under, that understands them. Hindi man sa walang understanding sa kanya. But they need someone to listen. Alam niyo, pinakagumagaling na actor is teacher. Then, <laughs> kaya man yung magsalita sa akin. It's getting so weird. Pero yun, yun. They, kahit kayo, di ba? Alam niyo, minsan parang, ano mo teacher, doon lang pakialaw. Parang, uh, da, 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 da. I mean, kaya man mag kami sa main job yung teacher, it's not because he's funny, but he understands, or he or she understands you. And I think that's one of the things that I've learned. And yung experience this would be the communication with the students. So basically, Rustam has improved on his referent leadership power to those who are in BOT. Yeah, the referent leadership power is when, an when you are uh, perceived as someone who cares, and then that is good. Uh, just to add something, actually Rustam, if you know him, when he was a student, he's very unsociable. No, I have, I have Victor. <laughs> He is a person who, has, who only talks to one person that time, that was Victor, and then you would see him talking to himself most of the time. <laughs> yes, but I'm serious, that's who he was. <laughs> but then he has really changed, and I believe that the Lord placed him there for him to realize that we have to be sociable beings as well. And look at him now, he talks to everyone. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's go to, to uh, our youngest guest. Sir Jerry, can you repeat the question? Can you please share one experience that made you say, yes, God placed me for such a time as this? Yung para kay Esther na, such a time as this. Is that the last question? Yes, a penultimate. <laughs> uh, you were put in this position in such a time like this. You know, I, I remember in the past years that we are in the College of Education, and probably the greatest uh, accomplishment that the Lord has uh, done in my life and in our lives as faculty in the College of Education is to reach out to the teachers in the field. I'm very, very proud of that accomplishment because, you know, if probably I was not, uh, I did not come or I did not respond to come to AUB, I was not able to conquer, the word is conquer, CLC, South Central Luzon, and even as far as, my, you know, of my co-teachers like Sir Jerry, they were able to go to Palawan and, you know, those help and uh, professional development that we have given to these teachers outside and even when they come to AUP is probably one of the uh, pride that we can give for God's glory. Another one is the uh, the help or the the way we reach out to our students in the College of Education. When there was a time that we were told by the Department of Student of Finance that you know the most number of working students are from the College of Education. 
I don't know if that is still true up to these days, because we are now running out of uh, student assistants or work scholars. By the way, the new term, according to Serbo Romeo, is student assistant. No more working students, because they will be given a, a very, very good privilege coming this coming August, I think. I know some of you have heard that already. And you know, having having student assistants or college students who are working out their education by working in the different department in the AUP is something that we would like to, you know, respond and give help, if not financially, uh, that is morally and spiritually. I've tried many times, and certainly and the rest of the faculty knows this, even going to the office of Dr. Uh, no, Sir Mervyn Olarte and Mam Bolisino, uh, signing waiver and what do you call that? Guarantor, blah, blah, blah. In, for only this is, uh, education students to graduate and go out and fulfill their profession in the field. Uh, those of you who are working out their education here at AUP, we want you to know that uh, the last person, the last person to help you out are your teachers. And so we want you to have that experience so that you know also how to respond. When you have your students who are already uh, struggling and holding on to the last throat, you know. And uh, for me, that is our uh, mission. And, uh, it's not only me, but uh, all of the teachers in the College of Education. And uh, I would like to tell you that each of us has our own way in fulfilling that mission. We have uh, different talents and gifts on how we can reach out to our students in the College of Education. It, it, it is always our, you know, nagugus bumps ako. Yung kinik kalabutan, you know that, you know that term, uh, foreign students. If the, the, the tarpaulin is out for those who are graduating, the Working Students Association will post a tarpaulin, a big tarpaulin in front of the, or near the rotunda, near the HR. Ang karamihan doon ay naka-blue, Imagine what AUP has done to the lives of these students. And I hope that when you graduate, you won't miss a year or a day to look back on how the Lord has blessed you in your education so that you can not only make your own personal lives better, but also the lives of the other people whom you will come in contact with in your, in your work when you will graduate. Thank you, Sir General. Okay, thank you. And this is the last question, as promised, that was the ultimate, second to the last. And the last but it's not actually a question, but the last one is, can you please share very, very briefly, like, your advice, word of advice, because many of our friends who are listening today, they will soon be teachers as well. So can you share one advice, one, yeah, one advice that would, that, that would help them remember to be true to the calling that they have as an educator? A while back, I have already mentioned that I have learned through my experience to accept myself and also to accept other people as well. And to, uh, what's this, to conclude or to just add more with what I had said, all I can say is just remember the word acceptance, still acceptance. You know what, In, uh, when you graduate, you would experience things that you have never planned, you have never expected to happen. And you've got to learn to accept. Accept the situation, accept circumstances. Things will happen, you did not expect that, but it will just happen. For example, when I was there in Enlac, 
I was like thinking that I would uh, have my two years there and then pro B and then regular so that when I go out, I am a regular teacher already and I will go to diff different conferences as a regular teacher. But then things happen, just as what I said a while back, because I had this blepharitis or conjunctivitis in my eyes wherein I cannot stare at the computer for long or else it would become inflamed or become reddish. So how can I finish my SF? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I don't know how many FS do I have to finish. Uh, school forms, like grades, attendance, and uh, you know, and I have to also prepare my lesson plan and the projector and all those. So how can I do that if I would just stare at the computer for five minutes? I cannot. I have to sit down and do my work for five to eight hours or things like that. So I was like, I was asked by, I was, um, what's this? Advised by my doctor to stop for a while so that I will have my eye recovery. That was a very disappointing part in my life because I have already plans. Like, how can this be? Something like that. But I have to accept. So when you go out, things will happen unexpectedly and you just have to embrace the situation even though you, you need to cry, you have to be broken hearted, but you have to go on. Accept your situation, accept yourself, accept the people and go on. And as you go on, there will be more surprises and again, accept those. So I hope that when you go out, learn to accept whatever happens. And if I may add, I believe that she's saying we have to accept, but do not be complacent. Yes. yes. When we accept, we accept things, but we strive. Yes, yes. That's it. We go beyond it. We, we, we accept things, but we look for opportunities to conquer them. Yes. So acceptance without complacency. Yes, also, just before I end. Yeah, you have to strive, really. Because when you stop there, it's gonna be you who will be more, more, more disappointed. Like, parang maiisip mo na, ganito naman pala eh, wala naman pala ako magagawa, hindi huwag na lang magturo, hindi eh. You have to keep going, so, yeah. In the, in the teaching field, it is given that you will teach academics, but please do not forget the other faculties. The simple, hi, how are you? You did a great job for your students, it's very important to them. I have this student that uh, she's very good. Actually, her grade under my subjects are 92, 95, like that. But then uh, her parents would tell her that, ano ba yan? Bakit yan nang inuwa ko? Ba't mas mataas si ganito sa'yo? Mga ganon, ganun yung ibang parents nila. But, uh, so, if you are going, if you are in your uh, field of profession, please teachers, do not be like, uh, basta nagturo ako, nasa'yo na yun kung uh, matututunan mo yun lang, pakailang kung ganyan yung grade mo, huwag kayong magiging ganon. Kasi you have to show your students that you care for them, that you are proud of them no matter what, because that really can help boost their confidence. For me, as an educator, as a as an advice to our future educators here, there's only one word that I would like to give out, and that's um, the word understanding. Always understand. When I was in the field, when I was I was uh, in the school, um, I was expecting because I was put in the education hub. That means your medium is English. You teach English, so you're expecting your students to speak English as well. But uh, my expectations were not met. I had to, to teach English first before I could get into my main subject, science. Because the students in the education hub are not as well versed in English. So, uh, so I was like, oh, okay. It's, it's okay. It'll eat my time in teaching science, but it's okay. Because it's hard to teach science when they're they will stare at you blankly, like, you know, for the 30, 45 minutes you're teaching them, they'll just stare at you, and then he'll say, do you understand? And they'll just say, yes. <laughs> you know, and then you give them, like, an activity or a quiz. For 20 minutes, they'll not do anything, they'll just, you know, whatever. And then, 
I'll ask them, why, why are you not working? Why are you not finished? And they'll just say, teacher, I don't understand. I'm like, what? And you get frustrated. You know, I'm like, I asked you if you understand, you said yes. Now that I give you work, you don't do anything. No, I don't like that. So there are times I get frustrated. And frustration is very hard. So as a teacher, you should understand that this English is their second subject, or their second second language. It's not their first. So you have to at least uh, understand that they they need to understand what they're doing, you know. So if you have to chop it piece by piece, do it. Because, you know, another thing is understanding that. When I, I'm teaching high school, that's a uh, grade 7 to 12, no? And it's, it's not high school there, it's Matayong 1 to Matayong 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's high school for them. So I have this, I have this student that is, oh, you know, I just want to give up on him. And there are times I come to the office and I'll speak to my co-teacher, I'm like, dude, were you that naughty when you were in high school? And I'm like, bro, I can't understand. I have to understand that when I was in high school, I was not that naughty, but they're high school. Understand that at this stage, they're really like that. You know, at some point in life, they'll soon realize that, oh, I need to fix my grades and do stuff. So understanding for teachers is very important. So, uh, especially when it comes to your co-teachers, you know, the system, the school system is different from theirs. You know, uh, if we're going to have a meeting, they'll not tell you ahead of time, like one week. If the meeting's tomorrow, they'll tell you tomorrow morning. So, you'll like, huh? Oh, but I'm just wearing shorts, I'm going to be in the meeting. So, so it's, it's that way. So us, like, we, if we hear something, there's going to be a meeting. Okay, we ask. Because if not, then good luck. So basically, basically uh, Sir Ted is saying that we should be understanding and we should learn how to be flexible. Yes, as well.
that uh, feeling aside, number one, uh, your chance to be a good teacher is one out of one thousand. So focus on the one. Okay, but there are one thousand ways that you can make it okay. But you need to focus on that one because that's the only thing that you have to be. Secondly, you're a teacher. Kung meron ka, hindi magaling na sujante. Yun actually yung need mo. Yung doctor pa sa mga sa walang sakit. Diba? So yung teacher, para dun sa may hina. I mean, may magagaling. Of course, you'll teach them, but teaching them would be very easy. That's why we mix them up. And is it going to be a good life? No. One of the things that I would advise you is you need to learn from the story of Ruth. Tumitingin na sa Starbucks na rin na niya. So ibilis na natin pag salita. You need to learn from the story of Ruth. Number one, ano na, ano na pansin niyo dun sa story ni Ruth? Was God ever very present na obvious ba yung ginagawa niya to the, story, to the life of Ruth? Yes or no? No. Isipin mo yun, namatay ang kakagad ng asawa. In the very first act, patay agad yung asawa mo. Isn't that like great? Okay. The thing is this, God works in mysterious ways. There are no ways to express what seems to be wrong may be a part of a bigger plan. You're, you're, we are players on God's bigger plan and we have to give more than we take. One of the best things that we can do is uh, natin, leave the classroom better than you arrive. Leave the students better when you arrive. They might be that bad. 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 Hindi pa siguro marunong magdahil. Hindi para sa... Ang daming imperfections nila. And you, the best thing that you can know is you can try. Will they be perfect after that? No. But at least you try to find what's good in them. Kasi you're a teacher. You, you can help them. And change is possible. Di ba sabi ka ni Sir Fram? Weird ako dati. Actually, <laughs> fine. A lot. People can change. Diba? If you want to be, people want to change and be forgiven of what they have been. Diba? Sino ba kaya? Diba? So remember that there is always a good in you. You know how to be good, how to be a good teacher. Never be cruel. <laughs> never be, never be a terrorist. <laughs> and if you ever are, kasi sa totoo lang, you will be one of these things. Sa totoo lang. Tanong niya na lang yung tatlong. If you want to learn more about it, yung tatlong yan. Actually, ask them. Yung, yung tatlong yan. Ask them before coming here, hindi ko po sila i-encourage mo. <laughs> hindi. Pero, di ba? Totoo lang. I, I mean, hindi ko sila, hindi sila, hindi ko sila i-encourage. But, learn to let them decide for themselves. Let them think if what they're doing is going to be good for them. Okay ba yung nangyari sa inyo? But the thing is this, be the helper of God. You may not be very meaning. Are you a teacher? No, time will show that. But do your best and hopefully you can help change the world or the worlds of these people that you are going to meet today. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for sharing. And before we end this one, I just want to encourage everyone. You know, as early as now, please start praying for your mission field. And when we say start praying for a mission field, allow the Lord to choose the mission field for you. Uh, right now, there are so many need for dedicated, service-oriented Christian teachers. Tira View Academy is in need of many teachers. Central Philippines Adventist Academy also sent me a message needing lots of teachers, which I already posted on COE alumni page. And there are many Adventist schools and even non-Adventist schools who need teachers. So start praying, Lord, here I am. Where will you send me? As a response to what he said in Isaiah. So to our guests today, we are very blessed that you have joined in our worship today. Thank you so much. And you know, it is always a joy for teachers like Mam Asa and I, Mam Magadu and Sir Dorado, Mam Francisco, everyone here, to see our alumni serving the Lord. Our greatest joy is not with the salary, because it's not much. 
our greatest joy is seeing our graduates, our alumni, serving the Lord wherever the Lord placed them to be. So in a few years' time, we wish to see you also here as alumni, testimonies of God's amazing grace. Happy Sabbath, everyone.